Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lex and I would absolutely love it if you love this content, if you love this these videos, if you want to let me know, hey girl, keep making this stuff. If you would like, share, comment, and subscribe. Now girl, we are on the road to a thousand subscribers on this channel. Um, you know, I started this channel as a passion project, like less than six months ago because I lost my job and so I was like I need something to do and honestly it has been so much fun to do this channel it's so fun to just be able to rant and talk about reality tv with other people who also like this reality tv stuff so like girl follow me follow the channel okay please um and yeah, let's get into it. So we are getting into Casa Amor, baby, Love Island, USA, season six, episode 19, Casa Amor. And let's just say this looks like it's going to be chaos. It looks like we're about to have like 24 couples in the villa when this is all said and done. Because this, baby, some of these people... Some of these men were not waiting. They're not waiting. They're not waiting. Let's just get right into it. Oh, quick, quick side note. I am going to be in New York from tomorrow all the way up until Sunday. So the recaps will be here. They will be on time. But if they're a little less produced than usual, just bear with me, okay? Because I don't know how much time I'm going to have to be putting together videos. But trust and believe, baby, the recaps will be coming just please bear with me if they're not up to your production standards, okay? Anyway, let's get into it. So we begin the episode with the aftermath of the recoupling. Everybody's kind of talking in their respective couples about what just happened. Or not the recoupling, sorry, the dumping. Uh, we're talking in the aftermath of the dumping. Everyone's talking in their respective couples about what happened. So Kenny and Janae. Uh, Kenny, or Janae says she does understand why Kenny chose Nigel. And like I said, I thought it was very nice that Kenny gave Nigel a sympathy vote. We're really we know so much about each other. Your favorite color is red. Your favorite animal is a bear, because you consider yourself like a teddy bear. How are you feeling right now? I'm good. Like, I was shocked that not one of the girls gave Cassidy a sympathy vote. Like, I don't know, to me, that was really brutal. That was very harsh. Um, Janae said she wanted to return the favor to Liv for when they saved her. And that was kind of the reason why she picked Liv. And I'm like, Janae, girl, like you were never going to pick Cassidy. <laughs> like, it's fine. But don't, I don't know. I just thought it was weird that she was trying to frame it as like, oh, I'm repaying Liv. It's like, no, you picked Liv because she's your friend and all of the girls chose each other. Um, so then Janae starts to ask Kenny if she feels like they're compatible. And Kenny, I saw someone on Reddit say this and I thought it was funny. Someone was like, Kenny is on a 30 second delay. Like he literally will look at you and then answer. So she's like shaking. He's like shaking his head like, yeah. And I don't know. I love my girl Janae. But something about Janae with these guys does kind of give pick me energy. I y'all aren't gonna want to hear it I know y'all aren't gonna want to hear it I understand I like Janae I think she's gorgeous but something about the way she talks to these guys is very much like are you in love with me do you think I'm cute do you think I'm beautiful oh my god can you see us being together forever oh my god oh my god oh my god am I the prettiest girl you've ever been with and it's like kind of starting to get obnoxious I'm not, I'm not Mm, I know y'all are gonna want to hear it and don't get me wrong I still love my girl Janae and I want her to find love and I want her to win maybe maybe but I don't know um so they do kiss after that which is nice uh we pan over to Miguel and Leah who are also making out I mean we know these two have very strong sexual chemistry and you know what Miguel is here for a good time not a long time baby so Serena and Cordell, uh, Serena starts to kind of profess her love for Cordell. I'm a little scared to like open up. Like that's me and I wouldn't want you to like take that in a way like, oh, she's not fucking with me or she don't like me. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, I just. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Take your time, Pastor. <laughs> And I'm gonna be very honest with you, this episode made me realize, oh damn, Serena actually might truly be a slow burner. She might be the first real slow burner we've had on the show. Um, she tells him like, look, I can be rough around the edges. I'm not super feminine. And I understood that. That actually hit me really hard because I feel like a lot in my life, I as well, I'm not a person that I would consider to be like super duper soft and lovey and like the traditional view of feminine, you know? And I think there are times where people mistake that for aggressiveness or coldness when in reality it's just like everybody has different personalities based on the life they live so i did genuinely understand where serena was coming from she tells him that she likes him a lot and i really i don't know like i was really touched during this scene and he says he also really likes her um he, Serena does say in her beach hut that she feels Cordell was handpicked for her because no one would be as patient as him. And I don't know. You see, this is why I never joined the Serena some mastermind bandwagon. I always had empathy for her. And maybe it was because I saw a little piece of myself in her, but it's like, I really understood where she was coming from, especially when she said that part about not being feminine, which for the record, I think she is feminine. I think that femininity has been put underneath a palm colored lens. And I think especially for a lot of black women or maybe other women of color, it's hard to feel like you're feminine based off those standards. But I don't know, I'm going on a tangent about this, but I really felt it this episode. I don't know, my outlook on Serena, I don't want to say it changed because I feel like I always had an empathetic lens for her, but I definitely got more insight on her. And those two do also kiss as well. So Nicole and Kendall. Uh, Nicole says she's not completely closed off, but it would take a lot to turn her head. And I just, I'm not buying Nicole and Kendall. I think Kendall likes her a lot, but I'm not buying Nicole. <laughs> I don't know. Something about Nicole comes off very strange to me. Um, Nicole gives very much, I'm playing the long game. I know where I have to be to win. I'm just keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real. Um, Rob and Aaron are still talking about Leah up on the terrace. They are, they're still, they're still talking about Leah. He does tell Aaron, uh, Rob, no, sorry. He does tell Aaron, however, that he did pull Liv for a chat and he says he likes Liv, that Liv is hot. And I'm just like, this is so weird. <laughs> Rob, fool someone else, you're not fooling me. You are not fooling me, Rob, that you like Liv all of a sudden. Liv and Cassidy are also having the same conversation about how Rob pulled her for a chat. Uh, Liv says, you know, it doesn't seem like it would work, but it, it, it might work. Fool someone else, you two, I don't know. So Janae is submitting over Kenny at this point. This girl is in love. And like I said in a previous video, Janae very much gives me whoever's going to pay attention to me. I'm in love with him now. I just, Janae's very lover girl. She's a lover girl. Okay. And that's good. But I just feel like it also kind of sort of starts to come off disingenuous. I know y'all don't want to hear it. I know y'all don't want to hear it. I know. Oh my God. Y'all probably gonna be mad at me. Uh, y'all gonna be mad. Meanwhile, Kenny was speaking with the guys and telling them how he hasn't spoken to everyone yet. He's debating whether or not he should still have a chance with everybody else. And this is why, like, I don't know. I feel bad for Janae because I feel like she goes all in. We saw her go all in with Connor originally. Now she's all in with Kenny. And I feel like both of these guys were always like, but I still want to try to, you know, test the waters and see if I can talk to everybody first. Mm. Okay. We go to the next morning and the boys are making breakfast and they get a text. Ready to leave the villa and don't tell the girls, boy oh boy, Casa Amor. <gasps> Why are you guys look more excited than me? I'm single. Oh 
Mark. I want to say bye, though. You can't, you can't, you can't. We can't say bye. Do with that, do without that. Shh, let's go, let's go, let's go. But you, you can either pack your bags and leave, or turn down the invitation and stay in the villa. Time to make your mind up. Hashtag boys on tour, hashtag choices. Okay, I say we stay. Okay, hold on. <laughs> and it says it's time for Casa Amor, okay? Now the boys get the chance to either stay in the villa and not do Casa Amor or go. Baby, they all choose to go. Cute twist, but none of them were ever going to say no. And don't, don't delude yourself into thinking Aaron gave it a thought. No. None of them were ever going to say no. So cute twist producers, why did they give the twist to the guys and not the girls? I'm just being honest. Why did they give that option to the guys and not the girls? Because they knew all the guys were going to go. If they gave it to the girls, guaranteed, Kayla would have stayed. I think Serena might have thought about staying. I think everybody else would have probably went. But I think that Kayla and possibly Serena would have stayed. And that wouldn't have made for that good of drama. I see you, producers. Okay, now Ariana shows up. The guys all go to call some more. And by the way, those scenes of them grabbing their suitcases and leaving, I was in tears. That was so funny. Miguel was so funny with, during that little montage. Anyway, um, Ariana shows up and she tells the girls that the guys were given a choice to either stay in the villa or go to Casa Amor. None of the girls really cared that their guys went, at least on the surface, except for Kaylor, who is crying already, saying, well, if he finds another girl, it's so be it. And I'm like, girl, I feel bad because Kaylor's going to get her heart broken because I think Aaron is very much playing the long game. And I just feel bad for this poor girl because her heart is going to get broken <laughs> by this guy. Because he's not serious. Like, this man is very unserious. But Kayla is serious. So over at Casa Amor, the boys, they are way too excited. They are screaming. They are shouting. They are dancing. Miguel says he's going to get to know people. And you know what? Shout out to Miguel. Because Miguel, Miguel has made it very clear he is here to play. I actually think Miguel should have been a Casa boy. I don't know why they brought him as a bombshell. I think Miguel would have made a very good Casa boy where he could just play, have fun. I feel like Miguel has been so upfront about the fact that he is here for a lad's holiday. And I'm, oh, you know what? I'm okay with it. Because no one has the expectation that Miguel's about to sit down and settle down with them, period. Aaron says he's also ready to get to know people because they've never been tested before, him and Kayla. And lastly... Kendall wants to test his connection out with Nicole, so he is open to new connections. All right, so the girls come in. No Some more, and be quick, because we've only got the beach closed off to the public for another 10 minutes. My name is Destiny. I always walk in a room. And come in. Notable things about the girls. We have... Jaya. Jaya, or Jaya, sorry, I think it is. Jaya says she has her eye on Cordell. This girl's 27. She's 27, and she's had her eye on Cordell. Okay? Sydney, I just said Sydney is not giving. The, the Villa Blonde, Sydney, I believe, she, she wasn't giving, but I feel like a few of the guys are going to be on her. And then uh, kind of when we first get in, Cordell is clearly feeling Jaya. Jaya is loud, y'all. And I'm going to tell you right now, I do not think Jaya is genuine. I don't. 
I don't. I'm sorry. I sniff blood in the water because this girl was a little too raw for this man. Like, you mean to tell me as a 27-year-old, you are this rah, rah, rah for a 22-year-old guy who don't really got much going on other than his brother being OBJ? A guy five years younger than you? Jaya, play in someone else's face. <laughs> play in someone else's face, Shaya. What is this? What is this? Anyway, the guys go to their dressing room and they discuss their top two. Kenny says that he's really into Destiny originally. Cordell is into Jaya. And then Aaron says he's into Destiny and Daniela. Uh, Jaya is also in the dressing room talking about how she likes Cordell. And they're all, all the girls seem really surprised at how hot Kendall is. Um, but Kenny's kind of on the bed saying he's not sure if the girls can match Janae's warmth. She's bubbly. She's fun. And I don't know. Kenny might not turn his head. Anywho, back at the villa, the boys are on the way. They're on their way. I'm not saying they're hot, but three random women on this beach mistook them for lifeguards and deliberately drowned. Okay, initial thoughts on the boys. Jacoby, no. <laughs> That's all I, no. Kane is at least tall. They brought in a lot of British guys. Like, they didn't have American guys who wanted to do this. Like, I don't know. I just feel like there's so many guys that are British. And it's like, I just feel like those couples are never real. Like, don't get me wrong. I feel like a lot of the couples on this are not that real. But I feel like from the beginning, bringing a guy who lives in a different country means that it's not going to be real. Like, I don't know. Ignacio's cute ish I don't know the more he started talking and then when I saw that earring I was like Ugh. but he's Latino he's Argentinian uh George is a sucker for blondes but I did think it was nice that he seems to be in med school at least he has some real things going on for him uh the boys look better in motion but barely barely uh these Casa boys are absolutely still not giving the girls are I think the girls are gorgeous but the boys, they are not giving. Um, so they're all sitting around things that I picked up. Like I said, Ignacio's earring, ick. It give me the ick. Uh, Nicole was smiling at Kane's intro. I definitely think Kane is Nicole's type. So we might see something there. Back at Casa, Sierra and Miguel are having their first chat. So Miguel says Leah's pretty, but he's not entirely invested. Like I said, Miguel is a Casa boy at heart, okay? This man is not pretending that he is locked down with anybody. Uh, he said that he, you know, he says, I was trying to focus on what you were saying, but your face was so distracting. He says he loves her face and her vibe. Miguel is so unserious. <laughs> Miguel is so unserious. And you know what? I'm here for it. He's good TV. Back at the villa, Ignacio and Leah are flirting with each other. Um, she says she's happy with Miguel, but she's still open. Uh, is Mi I think Ign Ignacio's faking his accent. Um, does anybody else feel that way? I was watching this with my husband. And my husband, he's not Argentinian, but he is Hispanic. And he is a Spanish speaker, who is also an English speaker. And he also felt like that Ignacio's accent was fake. Like, he was like, that's fake. Like, I don't know. Something about it seems very fake to me. Like, he's playing it up, but okay. Leah says most of our family speaks Farsi, so she can pick up on broken English. Girl, what does that even mean? <laughs> Bro, sometimes the girls on these shows be saying the most ridiculous things. <laughs> At Casa, Aaron and Daniela are having a conversation. Me encanta tu acento. Hablan así. Porque, ¿cómo así? Ceceo mucho. Yeah. Porque como vivía en Andalucía, ceceo. I'm like, it's so difficult to not do it. Wait, so you lived in Puerto Rico and then you moved to... I lived in Puerto Rico for more than 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um... My mom passed away. They start speaking in Spanish. And I already knew Aaron was gone as soon as that happened. You know, just... Um, so they are connecting. He says that Daniela is 
kind and she's sweet. Um, they share common life experiences like Aaron being vegan, living on a farm. Daniela also said that her family has two farms and she's a vegan. So I don't know. Seems like Daniela was brought in for Aaron and we can already see that he is starting to crack at the seams because this girl actually has things in common with him, unlike Kaylor. Uh, at the villa, we start to see Kaylor cracking at the seams. Uh, Kaylor is crying about missing Aaron. The whole day we just see Kaylor crying. I don't think Kaylor has talked to anybody yet. And girl, you better start talking because your man is. Um, Nicole and Kane are also talking and he says that Nicole looks like his ex. I guess this was supposed to be a compliment, question mark. Um, but she says that Kane is her type on paper, um, as we clearly see. Um, so we'll see what happens there. So at Casa, we see Cordell and Jaya. No, you too. If I was here day one, you definitely would not have been standing there by yourself. Like, really? I definitely would have been there, yeah. You would have? I swear, like, when I first saw you, I was like, oh, he's my type. The outfit? I was like, <laughs> I love a man that can dress that up. Like, that motherfucker on, did it? Like, okay. Put that shit on. Got me blushing a little bit on, you know. I'm, I'm blushing, blushing a little bit, it. but it's just like, I fuck with that. When I walked in initially, Cordell caught my eye. He was the f Are y'all buying this? Are y'all buying what Jay is selling? Because I'm not. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, she comes in hot, says, you're my type. I love your outfits. You're a king. You deserve someone that matches your energy. Even Cordell, I don't know if y'all peeped it, but I feel like even Cordell was a little like, oh, okay. I mean, she cute, so I'ma take it, but that's a little weird. It, it's giving faith. It is too much, too fast. Now, I put a little comment on Reddit and somebody commented back that apparently Jaya is into OBJ. They searched her Instagram and found that she's into OBJ. I believe it because I don't know. Like something about this was not giving authentic. Like none of the other girls were this gung ho over the other guys the way she was. So, and I'm sorry, but something about the fact that this girl is five years older than him and we're supposed to believe that she is madly in love with him and he's her perfect type and she, mm, mm. Jay, uh, play someone else you ain't playing Mises. Now, Seri he does say, uh, Cordell, that he is thinking of Serena, but he will not build walls up from getting to know Jaya. Um, so in the villa, Janae is talking to Josiah. She, he starts off by talking about how he doesn't want his girl to have to work. He wants to be a primary provider. Um, you know, if his girl wants to start a business and okay, fine. Uh, they both not know. They both didn't know. Yeah. Okay. You guys can have them back. <laughs> Let me give them a chance. Let me be nice. Let me be nice. I'm sorry. First girl, both beautiful. First girl had the heart. Mm. Second girl kind of had like the conversation, the mm. intelligence, if that makes sense. I so I was trying to have my cake and eat yeah, it too. Janae says, then why are you single? This guy proceeds to tell us that he once had two girlfriends at once, one for looks and one for conversation. Why are we leading with that? Why are you leading with that, sir? Why? Why are you leading with the fact that you're a cheater? Why? So, Janae says, bring him back, y'all. Take him back, y'all. Agreed. Janae is such a fantasy land girl. She's talking about how they gonna build a J-shaped house. They gonna have all these kids. And I'm like, girl, you are a lover girl. I feel like she falls so quickly. In Casa, Rob and Destiny are having a conversation and Rob is having yet another conversation where he's not saying anything. What is it? Like, is this him trying to be sexy by saying like one word and then just staring at the girl weirdly? Cause I'm tired of watching it. Like, what is this? And the girl, uh, Destiny in her confessional says she likes him because he's hard to read. Like, Take Rob off the TV. This is so weird. 
In the villa, Janae and Jacoby are also talking, and Janae starts off by saying she processes life different from other females, and that makes her, di you know, her different. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. Janae gave me huge pick me this episode. I, look, look, I know we're supporting everyone black, and I'm still supporting her, but I, I was not really feeling Janae. <laughs> Janae gives me pick me. It, this was all so pick me. Why are you saying you're different from other females? Girl, get it together. I will say, though, that the two of them had an awkward cuteness together, though, when they were talking. I felt like she and Jacoby were actually kind of the best match out of all these people she's been talking to. The banter seemed to genuinely flow. It wasn't just like a weird mass of like Janae being like, do you love me? Are you in love with me? What's your body count? Oh my God, am I your perfect match? Like it genuinely seemed like they had banter. So I felt like Jacoby can match her energy there. Um... So they play spin the bottle, as they always do on night one of Casa Amor. And let's just go through who kiss who. So Aaron made out with the blonde. I, mm, is her name... What is her name? I don't know. I put Aaron made out with the, the blonde. <laughs> Liv makes out with Kane. Kaylor has a three-way kiss with Leah and Jalen. Serena kisses Kane. She actually says Kane is her type on paper. That was shocking to me. I'm gonna keep it a stack. Kenny kisses Sierra. Ignacio kisses Leah and Kaylor. Miguel kisses Danielle and Sierra. Cordell makes out with Jaya. I don't know why I wrote her name as Daya in my notes, but it's Jaya. And then Aaron makes out with Daniela, but he's like pushing her off. And you could clearly tell Aaron's like, oh boy, I'm about to make a mistake. So let me. So post game, Kaylor and Serena are talking and Serena's like, I really miss Cordell. Like I need him. Like she's really missing him. She says she still wants him despite meeting all of these guys and seeing Serena be so vulnerable about her feelings again, really made me realize Serena might genuinely be a slow burner. <laughs> um, I always kept the benefit of the doubt for her because I feel like people were so harsh on her. Um, and she, she really still wants Cordell and misses him. And she says, my man's over there, you know, with a bunch of girls in Casa Amor. And you could tell she was genuinely upset. I don't know. Kaylor is sobbing this point about Aaron and Serena is trying to comfort Kaylor by telling her that Aaron would never kiss another girl outside of a challenge. Newsflash, that's not true. Jaya and Cordell are talking in Casa and Jaya's like, what better we should- I didn't put lip gloss on, like I put on you. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Sharing. And Cordell's like, oh, like, are you asking me to share a bed? She's like, no, I'm telling you that we're sharing a bed. So which one? Don't like Jaya. Sorry. I don't like Jaya's personality. I think Jaya's fake. <laughs> I think Jay is fake. I don't like this thing that she's doing. She is way too aggressive with Cordell to the point where it comes off disingenuous. So if she is genuine, she needs to fall back a little. Um, but they are cuddling. And at this point, he they start to have a conversation about chapstick. And then Jay at one point is like, are you asking me to kiss you? Do you want the chapstick off my lips? And I'm like, and Cordell kisses her. Cordell kisses her. I'm not surprised. I am not surprised that Cordell kissed this girl because Cordell has been desperate for attention. Out of all of the people in the villa, Cordell and I think Aaron have been the two that have gotten the least attention from bombshells, people coming in. And so I feel like because of that, Cordell is quick to crack for attention. Quick to crack. I'm not surprised he's the first to kiss. I don't know. I don't know if y'all are surprised, but I was not. 
I knew that man would crack for attention almost immediately. So Daniela and Aaron are also going for a chat and you know, Daniela says their conversation flows well. You can really start to tell that Aaron is feeling her. He is so red. He can barely look at this girl. And we end off the episode with them chatting and kind of looking at each other. It's kind of clear that Aaron wants to kiss her. And then we see in the preview, they kiss. Lord have mercy. I'm assuming that they're going to do what they did last year and send over the clips like they did last year to the girls over in the villa because, baby, so much is already going on in Casa. But this is spicy, okay? This is good television. Very good television. This was a little bit of a longer review. But anyway... If you like the content, if you want to see the rest of the recaps, baby, we're going to be here all week for Casa Amor. We're going to be here all week. <laughs> so if you want to see my takes on anything, please, please, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit that subscribe. Turn on the bell notification as well so you get the notification when I upload, okay? Because YouTube be playing around sometimes. The videos don't always be coming up. So make sure you have the most chances possible to see my videos by hitting that bell button. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I am strapped in for this Casa Amor. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.